It's the end of work from home. That's it. It was a good ride. No more fuzzy slippers. No more meetings with a nice shirt up top and who knows what underneath. Time to take the dog to the boarding house. Take him down to the vet. Board him up. No more emotional support dog during the workday. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Amazon. Amazon just came out. Huge. It just huge news just dropped. Uh, January 2nd, all workers have to return to the office. That's it. It's over. So what about the rest of us? You know, what's going to happen to small, mid and large, large companies? Well, that's really, really what I want to get into today. I'm just going to give you my opinions on this. I think it's very complicated. Um, before we get into my opinions and what's going to affect whether or not you really are going to be back in the office, let me just kind of summarize for you what the Amazon article said. If you want to read the full article, you can just click it somewhere in the link down there. You can read the whole thing. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to reduce a layer or maybe two, maybe more of management. They're going to flatten the organization. And they think, by flattening it and getting rid of the bureaucracy, you're going to get a little more team effectiveness. The second thing that they announced, and this is the big news that everyone's really reacting to, is that starting on January 2nd, next year, 2025, Amazon's going to require all employees to return to the office more consistent with that five days a week in the office standard. And they believe that that you know, in-person work is going to improve collaboration, learning, you know, better connection to the culture, which I personally agree with. I mean, it's hard to build culture, maintain culture, and keep people part of culture when they're working from home. I mean, I just, I just don't know how you, you do it. It's very, very difficult. So that's the news. The area that is, I think, totally safe from this move from Amazon is startups. Totally safe. Startups do not want to invest money into office space, right? They'd rather take that extra monthly money that they'd spend on lease and insurance and add that to finding more talent or add another benefit or add a tool, add something to help their tech stack, anything that they need to be more competitive in the marketplace. The last thing they want to do is spend money on overhead. I speak from experience. It's only after you get to a certain size, a certain scope, you have a certain amount of run rate that you say, okay, yeah, maybe we really do need an office under certain circumstances. And I did get to that point with my business and we did, we did get an office. Um, so what about service industries, retail, restaurants, manufacturers, construction, uh, housing? Look, these industries were never really impacted by the work from home trend. It was never an option for them. However, the front office, the accountants, the you know people in finance or sales, marketing, Within those industries, I think those people should start preparing to come back to the office because they could kind of work their way back home during the pandemic. But the you know frontline workers really had no choice. They had to keep working. But now that Amazon is really that first domino to fall, I think if the company has wanted people to come back, this is the excuse that they can now use to bring that level person back into the office, particularly because they already have had everyone at the office. It's really hard for you to keep that facade up of, hey, I need to work from home when 90% or 80% of the company is actually on the shop floor. I think that time had always been a ticking time bomb. I never thought that was going to be a permanent part of the workforce. So the obvious losers in this scenario are the workers at the large tech companies or just large organizations that uh, had to immediately shift to the work from home during the pandemic. So Amazon, now that they've fallen, CEOs that really felt like they were forced to shift the workforce home, this is now the time for them to push back, right? The job market is tighter. The power has shifted away from the worker, has gone back to the employee. And the CEOs, they're very sensitive to productivity, culture, training. And in some cases, they want the control. They want to know people are there. They don't want to feel like they've lost control of what people are doing. Now, granted, there are some tech things you can do to make sure people are working and they are there, they're being effective and they are training. 
that's not what I'm talking about right now. I mean, just in general, those are the reasons why a CEO is going to want people, in my opinion, back into the office. Now, if we look back at what life was like before the pandemic, it's only 7% of the workers worked from home. From the companies that it made sense where that you could work from home, only 7%. So it definitely swung 50% more. I mean, it could have been 75%, right? Now, is it going to get back to those 7% levels? I doubt it. But absolutely, this is now, I think, the first domino that's going to affect large companies And again, if you've got an office and it's in town and you're working from home, I think your time is limited. All right. So that's my prediction. I do think you're going to end up back in the office for the most part. So if you have to go back into the office, why don't you come on over? Talk to us. Let's see if one of our clients is hiring. Might have the perfect job for you. If you have to go back in the office, you might as well improve your situation. Okay, that's it from Temple. See you next time.